Hey guys, welcome back to the Snap Ring Chronicles. Today we're coming back at you with another vintage uh, ratchet video. Uh, this time we have this uh, vintage snap-on ratchet we're going to take a look at. Uh, but before we jump into it, like we always do, could you give me a like and also subscribe to this channel if you find these type of uh, ratchet tool etc videos interesting or or helpful in any way it only takes you a second you can hit the subscribe button and uh, it would help me out okay so we have this uh, half inch drive snap on SV-71A USA of course and this one has a date code here between the on and the off in the switch and it looks like a boxy 8 so in fact this ratchet supposedly was made in 1968 <coughs> and here's a look at the underside it has like a pretty deep trench here where it goes pretty far beyond the edge here the top edge and it goes down a bit and has forged lettering the snap on the USA <coughs> excuse me are forged and on the back also it has a deep well here also and there's no hole on the handle no hanging hole and we have the on and the off which are engraved and also the date code and there's the plate i just wanted for a little bit of contrast show another in the 71 series this is the number 71-m this one's a little bit different but all in all these ratchets have changed very little in a long run uh the 71 series i think started in the early 30s and as we see here's an example all the way up to 68 so like a 40 year run there so it's pretty a pretty long run this one is a little bit earlier than this one this one 68 this one by the date code there that one corresponds to or looks like the the date code of 1952 it's like a, a stylized two there which uh, looks like it belongs according to the chart in 1952 and this one has the letters also raised forged in in the front and the back and this one has a hole in the handle and no on and off here but there are they are forged into the handle down below the switch and if you put these side by side they're pretty much the same except for small details they're pretty much the same and they stayed pretty much the same for I don't know, say 50 years. I'm not sure when they stopped making the 71 series, but if it went up to 68, I'm sure it went a couple of years after that, probably into the 70s. So, but that's just uh, that's just a guess on my part. Okay, so let's open this up and take a look what's inside. Oh, but just just before we get into it, uh, that other the 71m this is 20 teeth and it's also half inch drive and this one here is 24 teeth let's open it up and see what we have these have slotted screws when i first opened up this uh this ratchet someone had put 
a good amount of red grease in this it was swimming in red grease this is what the screws look like they slotted lift up on the anvil a little bit and we take out the plate and the plate typical of snap-on is a pretty heavy thick plate which I always like it just uh, gives that extra sturdiness especially because they they balance the the pole is balanced in in the plate here so they used they use the plate to uh, to keep the keep the pole straight and help secure the pole. But here's a look at the plate. As you can see, it's chromed on both sides. And we pull up on the gear, and the teeth are huge. You can see the teeth here. They're pretty big, they're 24, as I said, and this is what the gear looks like. It's peened in that kind of sun ray peening that's, uh, that was popular with Snap-on. And here's a look. Here's a look at the, the one from 1952, and it's pretty similar, similar peening. And on the back of the ball detent, there's a hole. And I don't think you'll probably be able to make it out, but you can see the spring in there from the hole. Not sure why they have a hole here. Mm, could it be that they peen this and the ball, and then through the hole they put the spring in? I'm not sure. That's just a, a little bit of conjecture on my part, but there is a hole here, and here's a look inside the head, the mechanism, housing, and to get this out, to get the switch out, just take a little punch and a little hammer. It doesn't take much and the switch comes out. This is what the switch looks like. There's like a box towards the switch handle and that box fits into fits into the pole. And I'll show you the pole. There's a lot of spring tension under this pole, uh, so when you remove this pole, be careful, the ball will want to shoot out. Let's see if I can contain the ball. Here's the ball. The ball is pretty big, it's a good size ball underneath the pole. And the thing, this spring is long. It's pretty big. See how long it is? It's like a strong spring too. And when you put it in the hole, it sticks up pretty far. So it's kind of hard to get the ball balanced on that and then depress the ball down to get the pole in. But here is the pole. And as I said, there's a square section there that fits into that square section here on the switch like so like that and that's how it switches it catches the pole and switches back and forth here's the pole just one tooth and this is what it looks on the underside there's a little rubbing there from the ball underneath the pole and this is the protrusion that goes through the plate. This one, it looks a little bit roughed up. 
if you take a look, let me get, you take a look on top here of the paw tooth, looks pretty raggedy on that one too, a little bit ragged. And one thing I did find on this gear, let me see, is this one tooth here looks like it got sheared off somehow. You see that one there? It's pretty flat. Looks like somebody over torqued this and kind of messed it up. Every, the other teeth look pretty good, except maybe this one here has a little dent in it. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe some over torquing also, but for the most part, most of most of them look okay, except for that that flat one there, which still holds when you ratchet. It still holds, but I wouldn't want to crank down on it. It might slip. Okay. Here's the inside of the mechanism. You can see the broaching there. Not too bad. A little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, not perfect, but pretty strong. These are pretty strong ratchets. These huge teeth, even with just one paw, these huge teeth, it's pretty hard for you to slip with only 24 huge teeth like that so these are pretty rock solid and these walls here are pretty are like very thick and the paw is leaning leaning against these uh, these walls here I'm looking at that, is that a crack? no, I don't think it's a, that's a crack I just spotted that. No, it doesn't go into the other side, so I don't think that's a crack. But like I said, these walls here are very thick, so it takes it takes a lot of pressure, a lot of torque when that when that pole is leaning against these sides here. So these are pretty heavy duty ratchets okay to get this back together you take your spring you put it in I did that already this is the hard part uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to cut away for this because it takes a few tries you gotta get the ball onto the spring and it does that it doesn't want to sit on the spring so yeah it takes it takes a good amount of tries to get that ball to sit on the spring and then once you get it on the spring you have to push it down and there's a long way down because see how f how pronounced how much that spring sticks out so what I try to do is I try to take a screwdriver and mash it down and then get the get the pollen but uh it's it's very tricky because that that spring is going to get all goofy and it's going to shoot that ball across the room and you know it's it's a pain but let me try I'll try this off camera and I'll come back because I don't want to stretch this into like a 20 minute video. Alright. Actually that wasn't too bad. pollen you 
Yep, like that. <laughs> okay, so I didn't have to cut away. Uh, and now you take the switch. You make sure it's oriented correctly. Like that. And it might need a little bit of help. And when you get it like this, you might have to take it and peen the edge a little bit there to get it to sprout out so it won't fall out. You take your plate. Oh, no. You take your gear. You drop your gear in. You take your plate. You drop that in like that. Your screws. Get your slotted screwdriver. And torque it down. Not not too much. I do a little bit of torque. I won't I would hate for something like this to strip out and then try to find parts for it. And I doubt Snap-on has parts for this old ratchet. So there you go. Uh, this is the Snap-on. This is the SV-71A from 1968. As I said, this, this ratchet had a very long run. It probably had like a 50-year run. And it's pretty... It's a pretty hardcore ratchet. It's uh it's pretty it's very coarse but you know it's very strong also. Okay guys, until next time.